insurance policy to CVS for like $600,000, didn't do a thing for it, and then he voted against that bill that would allow, and it was in front of his committee that would allow you to take your Blue Cross prescription to any pharmacy. Remember that? And now our great Supreme Court in Rhode Island decided that that's perfectly legal. <coughs> it, it is so screwed up. Uh, if you can't give money, donate time to a campaign. Find out who's running. Uh, stuff mailboxes, address envelopes, do phone phone calls, uh, hand out literature at the polls on election day. There's things you can do if you don't have the money. But the candidates really need money because the unions, union employees have to pay their dues or they lose their job. A portion of their dues goes to candidates that the leaders of the union want elected. Even if it's against, even if you as a union member don't like that person, they're going to give money to them anyway. Um, 2010 is probably the best year. I mean, two years ago, four years ago, you never would have seen a group get together like this. You never would have seen people at the state house complaining. People are getting to the point where they've had enough. And I think everybody's had enough. I probably shouldn't tell you this, but I've even considered moving out of the state myself. I mean, I could move to New Hampshire. New Hampshire has no income tax, no sales tax. Their property tax is a little higher, but I'd gladly trade the no income tax and no sales tax for a little higher property tax. And they're not that far away, so it can't be a geographical thing. So you can imagine if Rhode Island had lower spending, lower taxes, more freedom, you'd have more jobs, your kids wouldn't have to move away to get a job, which how many kids now get out of college have these huge student loans and can't find jobs? I work, uh, I work at Rhode Island Hospital right now, and there's a girl who just graduated pharmacy school. Her student loans are $200,000. Wow. That's three times what I paid for my first house. And there again, the government saw a problem, college was getting expensive. So they set up the student loan program. And all it did was tell the colleges that there's more money available so we can double tuition. Tuition over the last 30 years, every year is going up double the rate of inflation. Because the more money that's available, they just jack up tuition. The pharmacy school, when I went to pharmacy school from 71 to 76, tuition was $1,800 a year. You know what it is now? $32,000 a year. And it's all because there's more money available. It's, it's basic supply and demand. At the basic supply and demand of economics, you can't change. So the only way we're gonna change it is by getting rid of the people that are there that represent unions. Uh, I have passed out a few, uh, few meetings, a list of all the people in the General Assembly that uh, have a connection to union, either employed by a union, they work for a union, they wipe seat in the union, they're a teacher, they work for a government agency, they're retired. They're so connected, and the only reason they're there is to take your money. And it's about time you kept it. And that's basically my presentation. somehow to share with other people, either you know, via email, whatnot. Of sure. course, obviously, you know, we can have your name there at the bottom as the author so that everybody knows who I can know the material. I'll upload it to the Tea Party site. Awesome. awesome. What, do you, what do you expect to be our waste to cost you? Um, What's the cost? Well, I ran two years ago, and to Sony spent, I think, close to $40,000. And I spent about two, but I got 36% of the vote. So if I had gotten 13%, 14% more of the vote, I could have beaten him. But uh, he's, he's not uh, working for the union anymore. I guess they had a disagreement. So now he's a uh, labor arbitrator for the state. So if you're a company and you go to arbitration and you pick him as one of the arbitrators, you're nuts. You deserve to go out of it. If you know which way he's going to vote. Do you, this is Smithfield that you're running against. Smithfield right? and not Smithfield. All right. Do you think that they've had enough of, of the 
shenanigans to, to actually give you, you know, 86% of the vote instead of 36% of the vote? 86%? No. All right. 66%? All I want is 51. All right. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be a two-way two -way race, because that's the other problem. Anytime things like this happen, if you have multiple candidates going after an incumbent, they always end up splitting the dissatisfied vote, and the incumbent gets back in. I mean, I've, I've actually taken out papers to run before, and if it's been a three-way way race, I'll drop off. Because I know that the best way to get rid of the incumbent is not to have a three-way race. David, um, it's the assembly members who have the pro union bias that David was talking about are back here on the table. So I need to want that list. <coughs> Good plan. Um, what guarantee, by voting certain incumbent out, what guarantees that we get a change in government? It depends how many you vote out. Even at that, you have things in place already. How can you change that so where well, the like impact will, will be felt? Same things like the Carrillo Act, you can repeal that. The, my goal is I'm going to run for the Senate. I think everybody should run for the Senate because if you have 19 votes in the Senate, you run the state. Doesn't matter what Gordon Fox in the House wants to do at all. Doesn't matter what the governor wants to do, whoever that's going to be. Without those 19 votes in the Senate, the majority of the Senate, you can't do anything. So nothing would happen without those 19 votes. So I think if, every, if people vote and run for the Senate, and you can control 19 votes, and none of those 19 people want lower taxes and lower spending, you'll get it. What is that vote that you should? Is that something to work on? Uh, voter initiative has been hanging around the General Assembly for a long time. There's pros and cons of a voter initiative, because in, in truth, democracy is a bad thing. Like, democracy is basically majority rule. And that's the problem we have now. We have 48% of the U.S. population doesn't pay any federal income tax at all. Well, those 48% are going to go out and vote when they want free health care, they want free this, they want free college tuition, because they're not paying the bill. The problem with voter initiative is you're going to have the same problem. If we had a voter initiative bill and the only thing you could do would be to cut spending, I'd be in favor of that, certainly. But the problem is now you'll have the same people who go to the polls that live on all these government programs would do the same thing. My concern is um, the people that were dying seem to be so apathetic. You know, in other words, if you ask them to consider coming out to a rally or you talk with them, and they even seem to sort of grow away from you, you know. No, uh, to be honest, probably most of them are too busy working to try and keep their heads afloat. Uh, even some of these rallies, I mean, there was a rally risk out at the State House at 11 a.m. this morning. Well, how many people who are working, some two jobs just to pay their property tax, can go to a rally at 11 a.m. on a Tuesday morning? And even the General Assembly. You ever notice that the reason the General Assembly doesn't meet, meet in the morning? Is that because that's when the lawyers have to be in court? If we, if we had a general assembly that met, like, say, after 5 o'clock or after 6 o'clock every day, more people could run, but they don't want to do that. They want to limit it. Most union contracts specifically even say right in the contract, if you get elected, you can leave wherever your assigned duty is to go to the general assembly. So it's not a problem for them. But for an average person to run, and be able to go to the General Assembly at 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon or whenever they, whenever they meet, it's, it's almost impossible and it's deliberate. From your perspective then, <coughs> is it best to go into the war, in other words, from house to house, and try to talk with people or in the yard and take them around the neighborhood? What is the best way of reaching out to the people of the island? Because apparently TV, radio, well, face-to-face -face contact is always the best. <coughs> um, if, it, if the public employee unions are the problem, and that's roughly, say, 30,000 people 
the state. Well, there's a, that means there's 970,000 other people who are not benefiting from the public employee unions. So you just have to motivate and get these people out. I'm hoping in this next election that so many Democrats will be discouraged with they didn't get universal health care or you won't, I don't think you'll see the turnout. You obviously won't see the turnout you did with the presidential election. So with a lower turnout, that helps knock off incumbents also. I think if 